In this video, we are going to find all primes p and q such that p q divides p to the q plus q to the p plus 7. Before we move on, don't forget to give a... Before I start to solve this problem, let me introduce the most important tool that I'm going to use um, in this question. So, which is, this is the Fermat's the tool theorem, which says that for any prime number p and any integer a, we have that a to the power p is congruent to a mod p. In other words, a to the p minus a is a multiple of uh, the prime number p. So this tool is useful because we have lots of prime powers and the index in particular are primes. For example, p to the q, q is a prime here, and q to the p, p is a prime here. So um, I'm going to try to use um, this theorem. Um, in short, it's called FLT to kind of reduce it to a smaller value. So let's begin. So given that PQ divides this expression, I can say that in particular, P divides the whole expression and same for Q, but let's deal with the case when uh, we only consider P to the divisor. So P to the Q, this part, obviously is divisible by P. So that means p divides q to the p plus 7. But by the FLT, note that I'm writing the letter L in a uh, smaller case because um, the, la um, the capital letters FLT implies the Fermat's last theorem. So q to the p is congruent to q mod p. I'm uh, sorry, q, uh, yes, mod p. So therefore, p divides q plus 7 and we can use a similar argument to say that q divides p plus 7 so these two um, expressions relations on divisibility are quite symmetric so um, the next trick that I'm going to use is to add some expression add something on uh, both q plus 7 and p plus 7 so I'm, I'm going to add p divides p plus q plus 7 instead, not just q plus 7, but adding a p into that, and q divides p plus q plus 7, not just p plus 7, but adding a q into it as well. So now, um, the special thing is, the dividend on both relations are now the same. So that means p plus q plus 7 is divisible by both p and q. Now, because p and q are prime, so they have a very, uh, they are very likely to be co prime. Um, then um, my wishful thinking is that I can say that p q, uh, the product of p and q divides p plus q plus seven. But we have to first um, deal with a special case, which is the case that when p and q are equal, which means that they are then not co prime. So we can first say that if p equals q, then P divides would divide not just P plus Q plus 7, but now it becomes 2P plus 7. So that means P divides 7, and the only possibility for that to happen is P equals to 7. And therefore, P equals P and Q are then both 7. However, P, Q is then equal to 49, and um, 49 does not divide. 7 to the 7 plus 7 to the 7 plus 7 because of this little 7. 49 is a factor of 7 to the 7 but not this 7 so um, this um, divisibility does not work so we cannot have uh, p to be equal to q and so uh, we can go back to uh, considering the product of p and q. Now, therefore, PQ divides P plus Q plus 7. Uh, I should also say that P is not equal to Q. And PQ co-prime. So we have this, yes. Now, having reached this stage, I'm going to um, 
I'm going to uh, kind of uh, leave the divisibility for a while, but just to consider an inequality is that when PQ divides P plus Q plus 7, I can say that in particular, PQ is less than or equal to P plus Q plus 7. Now, this is very special because we know that P and Q are both natural numbers. Well, they're primes or in particular natural numbers. And uh, we can always get a very, very large number if we multiply them. Okay, when comparing to adding them together and just adding a, um, a number 7. So when P and Q reach a certain value, then uh, this inequality will start to fail. So we do not have many possibilities for that to happen. The way I'm going to solve it is to put everything on one side, which is that PQ minus P minus Q minus 7 is less than or equal to 0, and try to add some numbers on both sides so that the left-hand side is then factorizable. So I'm going to add 8 on both sides. So the left-hand side looks like this. And then I'm going to factorize the left-hand side, which is P minus 1 times Q minus 1 uh, is less than or equal to 8. Now here comes the most tedious part because we have a uh, product of two natural numbers to be less than or equal to 8. And there are quite a lot of uh, possibilities. So, but symmetry, I'm going to say that with the logic of generality, I say that P is a smaller prime. And I'm going to separate the cases into um, by, by parities of P and Q. So if P is even, then we know that uh, P equals 2 and Q minus 1 is then less than or equal to 8 because P equals 2 implies P minus 1 is equal to 1 and and then we know that Q has to divide P plus 7 which means Q divides 9 so therefore Q can only be 3 and now we have some pair of solutions 2, 3 and 3, 2 Furthermore, um, if P is no longer even, otherwise, I say otherwise, P is odd, and so P and Q are both at least 3, and in particular, we know that P minus 1, Q minus 1 are both even. So that means that product is not just even, but it's actually a multiple of 4. Now, that means P minus 1 times Q minus 1 is 4, or P minus 1 times Q minus 1 is 8. We have only two possibilities left. The first case means that P minus 1 is equal to 2, and Q minus 1 equals to 2. So that means P equals to Q equals to 3. But that is not true because P and Q are not equal. So that's a contradiction. And the other case is that P minus 1 equals to 2 and Q minus 1 equals to 4. So that means P equals to 3 and Q equals to 5. So all in all, we have these four pairs, which are 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 5, and 5, 3. And we can kind of check the order pairs and uh, the first is the first pair on two three is true so six divides twenty four and for three and five so fifteen divides this sum which is three hundred and seventy five so they are all correct and these are final answers. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.